results of the Haifu F trial. Thank you, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. These are my disclosures. As we've heard from the previous speakers, fibroadenomata are very common, affecting one in 10 uh, women at some stage. The mainstay of management really is excluding uh, malignant pathology and reassuring women, but many want to have treatment. And of the treatment options, surgical excision and vacuum-assisted mammography are the, and mammotomy are the options. But VAM is licensed for diagnosis and not for therapeutic uh, measures. HIFU has been used for the treatment of fibroadenomata, and uh, Miriam Peake and myself carried out a systematic review of the treatment of HIFU in breast tumors, and we found that one of the main drawbacks was the prolonged treatment time of, 71 to 100, of 78 to 171 minutes. So we set up the HIFU F trial aimed at circumferential treatment of fibroadenomata in an attempt to isolate their blood supply and hopefully reduce treatment time. So what we did was we evaluated the change in volume over time following circumferential delivery of treatment. We compared this to a controlled group. Oh. So we recruited women over the age of 18. We excluded women who underwent previous radiotherapy, had breast implants, or had fibroadenomata that were not visible on ultrasound. We also excluded uh, fibroadenomas less than a centimeter in size. Now you've seen the device, uh, the Equipulse device by Theraclion outside, and we delivered all these treatments under local anesthetic only. No sedation was administered, or general anesthesia. The outcome measures are listed here, and uh, we wanted to reduce the treatment time by 50% over a period of six months. This is how treatment was delivered using a touch screen, as you've seen from previous speakers, the fibroadenoma was uh, circled and then the treatment uh, pulses of nine by two millimeters were planned both in the radial and anti-radial planes. Following completion of planning, we then deselected the center of the lesion to leave two rings of circumferential treatment, as shown in the top right-hand side. Now, I won't go into the details of how the machine works because I'm sure some of you may know this already. We followed patients up at two weeks, three months, six months. The control group of patients were seen at presentation and were followed up by, uh, by us at six months with an ultrasound scan following a, an amendment on our ethics. This uh, table shows the patient characteristics, and you will see that there's no difference in age between the control and the HIFU group. There's a tendency towards larger fibroadenomata in the HIFU group, but this was also not statistically significant. This is what they look like histologically on low power and high power, showing scarring at the site. The HIFU patients, uh, eight of them, eight out of 20, had pain on presentation, and six out of eight of these had complete resolution of their pain. You can see the treatment time was 34.6 minutes on average, and we reduced it at six months by 37.5%. Uh, the short-term complications are shown here. All of them resolved by a month. At three months and six months, we noted that a few patients had hyperpigmentation of the skin, but this was not noted by them and was not a was not com none of them complained of this. And some of the complications are shown here. Ecchymosis on the top two slides. One patient had a skin necrosis. Again, she did not uh, complain about it at all and came back four weeks later for treatment of a fibroadenoma in the opposite breast. The hyperpigmentation is shown in the bottom right. <clears throat> you can see that almost all patients showed a reduction of volume over the period of the study. We had one patient with a very rapid increase at three months and required surgical excision. And, and, uh, and so, and these, I showed you the histology of that patient. These are the changes in volume across the study, showing a reduction of volume of 43.5% by six months across the, the study. And in the control group, there was a difference in volume of 4.6%. The difference between control and treatment was clearly significant, as was the reduction of volume at two, three, and two weeks, three months, and six months. These are some patients. This patient had a reduction of 54% in, in volume. This one had a reduction of 64%. And this patient, interestingly, had a fibroadenoma of 46 millimeters at the outset, and the size reduced by 48%. 
So circumferential HIFU treatment is feasible. feasible. There is a significant reduction in volume compared to control patients. It is a simple, non-invasive, outpatient-based alternative management option for fibroadenomata. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, paper is now open for questions. So while people are approaching the microphones, uh, Michael, um, I noticed in one of your slides that uh, you treated uh, some of the patients with a single ring and some with two rings. Yes. So was one ring enough? And if so, I, that seems that that would reduce the treatment time substantially further. Yes, we, we, uh, we treated 18 or so out of the 20 patients with uh, one or two rings. And so clearly it was sufficient. So I mean one ring versus two. Yes, the one ring patients, uh, the nine of them, almost all of them had nearly achieved two rings. So we had one oh, or two okay. sonications short of two rings, if okay. you know what I mean. So, um, so the intention to treat was two rings for yes. each one. Yes. So, so only there's one. no comparison really possible no. there. Okay. Um, in, another question. So in terms of the reduction in the treatment time, so was this a reduction in the actual measured time or is it in the proposed time by the software or? So obviously we, we measured the, the amount of time um, it took us to, uh, to treat the circumferential rings. And then we averaged that out and we knew how many sonications were required to treat the whole lesion. So if anything, that was an underestimate of the, of the time um, because there may, there, may, there may be more delays due to repositioning of patients, of course, that we didn't take into account. Question at the microphone? <coughs> yeah, hi. Um, why do you, in, in terms of the mechanism here, why, why do you think that, it's, um, that you're reducing blood supply as opposed to, let's say, um, uh, there's over-treatment happening of the, you know, in the standard treatments? See, so, you know, how do you know that it's blood supply effect or it's just you know, that, the, that normally we're over-treating the fibroadenomas with too much HIFU. With too much, sorry. With too much sonication, or maybe the way to do it is to repeat treatments, as was just presented yes, before. Yes, but clearly we didn't um, sonicate the whole lesion. So we, we are hypothesizing that this is to do with blood supply. We could not see the blood vessels because we didn't have access to Doppler ultrasound. So there, mi there might be other mechanisms, you're right. But I think it's likely to be due to, to blood supply, as we did not treat the whole lesion. <clears throat> Okay, thank you very much.